And so one gets the idea of Keats's that the world is a veil of soul making. What did he mean? So is our sense of the spiritual something like our moral sense? Well, it, it, it certainly has something of that, it, but it goes beyond it, doesn't it? There's a rather marvelous moment in a, a play of Iris Murdoch called Above the Gods. The character says, in a way, goodness and truth seem to come out of the depths of the soul. And when we really know something, we feel we've always known it. Yet also, it's terribly distant farther than any star. We're sort of stretched out. It's like beyond the world, not in the clouds or in heaven, but a light that shows this world as it really is. But they put me in mind, she was a Platonist, of Plato's speaking of philosophy in the seventh letter. He says, for philosophy doesn't admit of exposition like other branches of knowledge. But after much converse about the matter and a life lived together, suddenly a light, as it were, is kindled in one soul by a flame that leaps to it from another and thereafter sustains itself. The case of depression and so on is not really a sadness. Is it perhaps a soul sickness? Psychiatrists, after all, the word means soul doctors. And in German, there was the idea that doctors were ministering to Dizela, which is a hard thing to define, but that's the point. We need a word that's hard to define, because if we define it, we'll probably miss the point altogether. We come back to the phrase, a veil of soul making. Perhaps not all souls are equal. Perhaps we have to grow our souls. Perhaps souls can be so thwarted that they're almost extinguished. And many people who've talked about the soul have used imagery of fire or water, which are things that are more like energy processes. For example, Eckhart's Funkelein, the little spark, the scintilla anime, the soul spark, which comes from, corresponds to, and reaches out again to the divine. A potentiality, in other words, something in the process of happening, a latent function that needs to be nourished to grow and expand. Nowadays, it's not popular to say that there is a value to suffering, but it is part of the experience of suffering sometimes that it does deepen one's sense of what it means to be alive. A poet that I like very much, Tom, uh, Henry Vaughan, well, he had a collection of poems, in fact, called The Silex Sinterlands, which means the flint from which the spark comes. It comes from the heart and is the spark that is involved in and nourished by suffering. Then I think of that phrase of Wordsworth after his brother was drowned in the Abergavenny. A deep distress hath humanized my soul. And thinking of water, one would think of the Tao, the flow of life, which is not far from a kind of world soul, really and the flow that is in Heraclitus, where everything is flow at the heart. I'm very fond of Solaris, and it really shows somebody through the imagination of somebody that loves them and through their being imagined and through their experience of suffering actually growing a soul and coming to life.